my murder counts if the robbers held from the sheet that his mates were sleeping. That's why there was two. One held from one sheet. They went out. The stone car was, they were so intense on doing chuba and perhaps they found out that I had, and they wanted to do chuba so much that they had to take the car in order to do chuba. This reminds me of the story of the Chavetz Chaim where he had a winter coat. He had a winter coat and they stole his winter coat. These were running away. He's running after him. I forgive you. I forgive you. And Rick said, we'll learn the Kedushin Daf Mem Omen Aleph. We have Ruch Hashem. This Gemara is some of the most beautiful Gemara in all Shas, in my opinion. Mem Omen Aleph. Way in the bottom. So that's the Shita. So that's the dry version. The last three words. We've learned this many times, but we've never learned it where you're supposed to go and review it and know. So now, pay, pay attention. This is beautiful Gemara, and it's very appropriate to learn our search main show. Unfortunately, we have a small uh, group of people. All the time, small, a person should consider them himself. He will chatz of chayiv, a chatz of zaka. As though he has half, half demerits and half merits. The Hezbollah is very simple. The Makshoba, if a person thinks that he is a Rosh, that God forbid he is so bad that he is beyond redemption, Khalibukhas he may meyaish, he may give up hope of doing of ever getting into all of Abba, and he might just go on Tarpus Roll and continue going doing evil things because he'll say, What difference does it make? I've already messed up my life and uh, God is not gonna forgive me. And so therefore, uh, it's improper for a person to think that they are complete Russia. On the other hand, outside of Swara, it's not proper for a person to think that they're a complete Sadiq either. Because if a person thinks they're a big Sadiq, he might get very complacent and say, listen, even if I made a few obelisks, what uh, I am such, I have such a tremendous amount of schusim that this will not even be noticed, which is of course not Emes. Whatever it is, he might be prompted to do a bearing because he thinks that I don't have to miss other, I can afford it. I don't know where he got that, that information. Uh, the ratio came from heaven and says, well, you can afford to do a hundred of bearers today because you got a big bank account of exclusive. I don't know. We have, there's nothing that's more, more pathetic than a person that has an ego to imagine that he is a great sonic. When the revenge of Rahman is felt in all of directions, that he's not only, God knows if he is a tzaddik. So a Jew must always consider himself as right on the borderline, because this is crucial. It's crucial, as we learned yesterday, in the Marshal, in the Gomorrah there, Tainus, Yonalaf, or Manalaf, or Mitzvah, or we create Malochim, we create angels, that might, God forbid, uh, uh, say against us, or as Hashem speak for us, so we make our own record. Here again, the basic is that we have complete bechira. We have complete choice. Now, when do you feel the most free to make a decision? When you have no, no prior concepts. When you have no prior feelings about how you are. If you Just think, in other words, you can make a judgment, impartial. an impartial judgment. When you are not, you don't feel you're either a complete tzaddik or a complete Russian. That, that you have the greatest freedom. And the Rabbi Hashem wants you to have that bechira. He wants you to feel that you have that choice. Right? So it is a religious duty for a Jew to consider himself as a benami. Uh, yes, to consider himself a benami. So either way, he should not eat a miyayi. Or, or don't have any tikva, or, or figure that he doesn't have to be a Zohar. Not necessarily. Okay. Benini is nothing to get excited about. <laughs> if you consider that half of your your actions are demerits, that's not something to get <laughs> to, to go around boasting about. Yeah. What do you got to boast about? So you did a mitzvah, but you also did an Avera. You did another Avera. What's the big deal? What are you going to go around? You're going to yeah. boast about it. It's not much to talk about. So and that concept that the other one you gave us yeah. yesterday is right? you do an aver that you act not only doing it against Hashem but you're also physically harming yourself. You know,
But this is what this should be stressed more. That people My would My father always said this. I, I think this is the place where he got it from. That this is a, this is that's why the rabbinic and gave us these mitzvahs because each mitzvah is is a teacher. Is, is intended to help a portion of us. What I'm saying is if you take the average Jew and say, if they're taught right from the beginning that when you do an avera, it's going to hurt you physically, then they wake up. Not only physically, but spiritually. Science, yeah, which is important, but I'm saying, but someone will say, well, I don't physically, I'm, I can't understand it spiritually, but when it hurts them, ouch, then they may... Well, the fact that a person cannot understand that if you go against the rust, I, I, I can't, I can't imagine that yeah. you have to have a spelled out in letters, this is going to be detrimental to your neshama, or this is going to be detrimental to your goof. If you're going against the rust and the well, This is when you got seicho, but if you don't have seicho, <laughs> then you're you, know, you get pain, you get sickness because you're sitting, and then, then they can wake up. Yeah, okay. Right now that you know that you, you have, you can reveal the secret. But it may not be true that immediately when, when something happens, a part of your body is going to be affected. It, no. It's not necessarily going to be right away. No. So, but if but if people are told such a thing, they, it would be alien because they say, "I do avos, nothing but nothing happens. Give it to you at one time and different Bring things." Bring me tomorrow and you yeah. well, You don't have to close this. Does it come immediately, the, the physical pain, the, the punishment? Not necessarily, it depends on, the, on, on how much, on the other side, yes. It would seem reasonable that if a Jew goes and you know, he doesn't care about, say, a kosher, so he eats traitors every day and more and more, and he knows it's bad, he shouldn't do it, but he likes it. Why goes it to sexual? Yeah, but what yeah, I'm saying is eventually... It builds in him a bad nature. Also physical, it could hurt him in an arm, and it could hurt him in his foot, and it can hurt inside, and he gets all these different physical ailments. It's with Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah or Sukkah. Sometimes they have more than one uh, in the same Shas Gemara. Kipper, right. <laughs> but is there anywhere specifically where it says if you do this and this Avera, you'll get this and this punishment, physical punishment? You get a punishment. Yeah, but um, a, there can be all kinds of punishment. It can be even a... a, a an anguish of some kind. I'm saying well, so it could be you could lose uh, money in the stock market. There's different ways of getting punishment. But what I'm saying is, is there anything specific saying you'll get uh, a pain in your right finger if if you do this? Is it anywhere spelled out a certain punishment for a certain sin? Well, okay. actually, we can learn a little earlier on Laman Ches Laman Bet. It might be Joe because he said he might come back. You don't know how to dress. The officer was freezing. Over there, Ahmed Bey is talking about Bolatomay hosting law. We've learned this many times. If a person, write the last, uh, next to the last line on Lamed Chis. Okay. Bolatomay hosting law. If a person comes to make himself unclean, how do you make yourself unclean? <coughs> you do averas. You do something against the will of God, against the Ratzon Hashem. Post him law. Have his heaven given. Wait if some soap, yeah. Bola Tommy post him law. God opens up for this person an opportunity to do this of error. Because he has Bechiro, he has choice. <coughs> and he chooses to do Khalibha something that is improper. So that's Matami, that makes him unclean. The tire, on the other hand, if he comes to purify himself, Masayim also. He is helped. Not only is he given an opportunity to do a mitzvah, but that's purification, but he's also helped by God in doing the mitzvah, because obviously he's doing the Ratzon Hashem. Tone of the Bay Rabbi, we learn in the Yeshiva Rabbi, and give an example of that. A person is selling nafta. Nafta has a very... Uh, what do they use? Uh, uh, yeah, for cleaning. For, for cleaning. cleaning for, uh, it's a cleaning food. Mm -hmm. It's also used for lighting um, a fire. Would be used to I don't know. It's yeah, yeah, it's dangerous to... But naphtha is, is a cleaning compound. You use them clothes. The perfume. They're selling these things. On page of Lama Tesumadal. Bola Moda. He comes to go and measure naf. If you have to go now measure it, the guy, a person is buying it. And it has to be measured. So all of a sudden, uh, the storekeeper says, this is now self-service. You can measure it yourself. 
Omalo modern ata atzbacha. You measure it to yourself. Because who wants to handle something that smells terrible? So you let the customer handle it. <laughs> self service already. See? The Gemara's got self service here. You thought it's something new. Bola modad apasoman. But on the other hand, if he comes to go and measure, uh, measure perfume that smells beautiful and everything. So this, all of a sudden the self service is okay. off. Now you got full service. <laughs> Omalo, he says to him, Tomtingly, wait for me. I measure it with you. Today she's Bosama Niva Ato in order both we and I and you both have a good smell. Good thing. So the same thing, uh, when a person Khalivachas is coming to do an Avera, he's got the power given to him by but it's certainly not a right to do it. There is a differentiation. I don't know if you've ever had this explained to you between a power and a right. A power means a, a mere a force, a capacity to, to do it. A right means whether or not he's justified in doing it. So he has a power to, to do even his rishus. So when he has a power, God says to him, you do it yourself. You're going to be punished for it, but you do it yourself. You chose to go and do the rishus. On the other hand, if a person wants to do a tzitkis, Hashem to do a mitzvah in the Torah. Sameach also with that. Because everything that the Torah is here is for our Tevis Vegan. doesn't need us. We certainly need him. We certainly need his Torah. So Benishim says, wait, I'll help him. That's exactly what happens. There's nothing more beautiful in the eyes of God than Jews that are trying to do his will. Even a Cholib they may not be all they should be, but we've learned already, Baruch Hashem, if you don't say not successful. You have to be successful. Just uh, and be asking in the Indian. You got it. All right. And then this is the part that I, I call your attention. Turn in the Bay Rabbi Shu, learn in the Yeshiva Rabbi Shu. Avero Matapa Matam Temes Libo Shoda. A transgression stuffs up the heart of a person. The heart means the seat of the intellect, like Rashi says, Matam Temes. Matomes, so and so messes, the Kolchoch. Stops up a person from all wisdom. We're talking about Torah wisdom. Unfortunately, when a person does a virus, this takes him further away from Torah wisdom. And this is a very difficult thing. Uh, a lot of times when a person does uh, a virus, this uh, affects him and his capacity to serve God. And therefore, it is something to be avoided, like we've learned before and the Shulchan Aruch has got there if a person eats on, uh, on, on kosher food. The Tamsim is alay, but also this stuffs up the heart, gives an incapacity to be able to learn with clarity and moly go on nature. Therefore, when we have a wet nurse of feeding a, a baby, uh, a Jewish baby, the nurse is a non-Jewish person, that uh, she eat kosher during the time that she is breastfeeding the child, won't adversely affect the child. So we see from here that there is a tumor, there is an uncleanliness, there is a suppressant that's present in Averos. Because the truth is, every Avera is contrary to the Ratzon Hashem. No, it is not only that, it is this world, the whole world was created according to the concept of the Rabbinishim's Torah. The Torah is the blueprint for the world. If you live in harmony, you want to live in harmony with this world, you have to live according to Torah principles. Because if a person lives contrary to Torah principles, he's going against the harmony of the world. That's why in the, uh, the Torah, Valatorium, it says there at the beginning of, he says that uh, what is the reason that a person uh, is uh, uh, considered a, like a partner in creation if he is a dyad, if he's a Jewish uh, judge, and he, decides, and he decides a question in a proper way so that he writes wrongs that have been committed by people that have committed Averus. He is setting the world correctly according to the way that God originally set it up. He is writing what these, what these Rishoyim are trying to make improper, to disrupt. He's restoring the order that God, did, that God placed in the world and therefore he is considered like a partner in the creation. This is a, a beautiful concept. 
That's why we have there in the last mission, in the first period, Berkeyobos, Dino, Amasrat, Sholom. The, the proper deen is, is a proper thing for a Jew to observe. So therefore, when you go away from Libchas, from Torah, it destroys your, um, your capacity to uh, learn Torah on the level uh, that you should. Now, again, to what? Now, we'll get back here to the Gemara. Is there any specific place that talks about a medical <laughs> term, something in the medical field for doing an Avera? A specific, if an Avera, a certain Avera will bring on a certain disease or a physical something. Lashon Ara, we have Nega. Rabbeinu knew when he spoke to Lashon Ara, that they wouldn't believe in you, God. Immediately, God made him yes, says, "Put your it. hand, and you see yeah. the king lepers." Okay. To show him that, and then by the sister uh, Miriam, yeah. when she said, "Lo Shira gave him himself." Lo Shira causes uh, this. Causes this. Yeah. Yes, and then there are other things that happen if people uh, do other averus. There's other things, of course. What the nega is, we don't know. We need to describe it leprosy, but some kind of skin disease, whatever. It is. And there, are, there are other things. You see, once the, a person does but, things, but uh, yes. If somebody has to have physical proof that what they're looking at, if they do an album, they have their physical proof that it's wrong. I mean, look, that's not exactly what God wants. That's not no. exactly, He doesn't want somebody to have a moon in, in him because they see things are they, they got a pain in their hand or they got something wrong with something. Oh, big deal. So even if, even if they say so, even if, if God shows them, that's a big deal. A moon no. that they're going to oh, get real big. The truth is, the is, many times you do not understand. A person does not understand the. Uh, formulate the effect of his actions. What, and what only if it sometimes, it sometimes see, builds if he up. Do, if he did know, if he was told, now look, you do this you here. See, you remember what we learned. This, God do only it. goes and acts in this way in the Negev to Chilo Hashem. If there's no involved, God is Erech HaPayim. He, he is uh, long-suffering. And he does not lower the boom, even though a person re may he be, deserves it because he wants this person not to have a long-term de deleterious effects because of his imprudent conduct. And this is uh, something that uh, uh, we should all be very uh, cognizant of. And the mere fact that uh, it, we, it appears on the surface that we have uh, tranquility uh, does not necessarily mean that we are living in accordance with the Rotan Hashem. Yes? Worse than having something wrong with your goop is if somebody does it now, they have something wrong with the Neshama which is for eternity. Something is right, right. No. But no, pain. the Gemara says here, this is the way you're supposed to approach it. When you approach it this way, you consider yourself moxus, uh, benini, half and half. You are, you have the, you must in your own mind, in other words, consider that you have a maximum mm -hmm. freedom to make Kedushin. a proper decision. You understand? A maximum freedom to make proper decision. You should not feel under an any compulsion oh. To do an avle, and daf mem omet base. We end the time. Kedushim. 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 Ach. Kedushim. Ach. Hey, somebody wants to come in. Yeah. Eighty, say. Yeah. Eighty. The kedushim. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. On the top there. Call them. You're a adam. Ask person to see himself. Person to see himself as though he's half uh, has demerits and half merits. It's much better. Isn't it? Yeah, no it's breeze. a little it's, it's cool, but it's, it's stuffing. Well, we get that. that was true too. <laughs> so we we have no. This no, no. no. Zakai the, the my, opposite of chayev. This no. could, this means he is no. guilty, no. and zakai no. means he's no. innocent. No. Yeah, but, yeah, that's right. Fine. So now, yes. if now having made it this, uh, a, 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 in his own mind, understanding he's right on the borderline. Don't get too, too confused. It's, it's a lot of people get confused. They think in order for you to be a religious Jew, you have to have on your consciousness and on your shoulders the realization that you have to fulfill kol taryag mitzvahs. And perhaps a lot of people say to themselves, Rabbeinu Shalom, who can do so much? So, such a big burden, I'm not that strong. I don't have that much keiches that I can go and consider. Oi, the Rabbini Shem, I know he's not even doing it. He's just <laughs> thinking about it. That's even it. the idea of thinking. Watch a lot of people never do anything unless they think it out. Sometimes it doesn't mean they're going to do it. 
But first they have to come to a conclusion. So they think to themselves, how is it possible? I am not like these strong types. I'm not like these strong types that can go and pound off mitzvah after mitzvah. Not every one of us is, is, is <coughs> that way. I'm not complaining if there is a strong type like that that can do one mitzvah after another. Tebel Abracha, he should have a lot of success. I'm not envious of him. But in my case, I am a weak type. I don't pretend that I am strong. I am weak. Comes the Gomorrah and tells you, we're talking to you. You little a weak type. You little a weak little Jew. You want to do the right thing, but you feel overwhelmed. You feel, this is too much. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount of mitzvahs to do. And uh, first of all, the phrase we use, uh, I don't want to be a rabbi, like with some kind of a disease. Or a rabbitson, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a horrible thing, a fate, <laughs> or a shechet, or whatever yeah. it is. Even if a person, even if a person feels very weak indeed, a person feels, uh, uh, let the hand look up. Even if a person feels very weak indeed, comes the Gomorrah and says to him, don't get overwhelmed by the concept that you have to do an awful lot of mitzvahs and therefore you're powerless because after all you're not as strong as other Jews. You're a weak type. It's, you can only handle a certain amount of concepts at a time. You'd like to do the proper thing in the eyes of God, but let's not overdo it after all. You want, I'm willing to go and do, but don't push me. And I'll get to it and I'll do it, but I'll, no, if they talk to this person, certainly they're talking to a person of a greater stature. But, uh, yeah, he wants to do it. Oh, he says, the motor says, are we talking about wicked types? No, the Gemara says, no, we're not talking about wicked. We're talking about an ordinary Jew. He wants to do the right thing by God, but he understands his limitations. Now, he's no big time. The Talmud Chochem, I mean, it's very nice to be, be a Vilner God. There's no problem about it. No problem at all. We can handle this. Always consider himself as though he's right, half bad and half good. Not completely bad, not completely good. If he considers himself completely bad, he'd give up hope. He'd say, what's the use of trying? I can't make it. If he considers himself completely good, he won't even try to continue to uh, pro uh, progress. He'd say, well, I got it made. Either way, it's not proper. He says, such a person considers himself as though he's right on the borderline, balance sheet wise. Understand? Uh, yeah, we have a budding here, uh, mm -hmm. accountant, so I got to get to the point. Uh, it's just making, uh, getting right to the point there. Now, the Gemara says, "Also mitzvah If he only does one more commandment, not 365 more, just one more. So he doesn't have to feel he's overwhelmed with the responsibility of a lot of commandments, which who can do? I'm not that uh, thing. Oh, big. Yeah, one more. No, one more. Just, just one. One more. Just the next action. Like that comes, the next choice he has between good and evil. Let him choose good and avoid doing evil. You understand? The very next action. We're not talking about having to go and have on your shoulders the concept, oh, I got to do so many mitzvahs, I am, I am confused, I'm overwhelmed. But my response, no, I'm not. Get, get off that, get off that, that guilt complex or that overwhelmed complex. Just very simple life. Right for you, you simple Jew, that you think that you have a limited capacity. All right, we're talking to you. You that feel that you have a limited capacity, if you only do one more mitzvah, and God forbid your time has come, because you don't know, a person never knows how long they're going to live. If you do one more mitzvah, what do you think? If you got 50-50 and you do one more mitzvah and God forbid your time has come, you have now basically, you are basically righteous because you're more than 50% righteous now you're in your eyes. What would be 50% righteous? Whatever God considers righteous. We well, don't have that the, What is the use of being basically righteous in your eyes once he reaches anything well if, if at that Amazing. point a person is dying, it says you should uh, never depend on yourself on the day of your death. If at that point a person dies, so if a person's dying, so they should do this. If you, the last action you did was a was a righteous action. So they keep doing a mitzvah. 
You understand? The very last it's thing you did is the last thing because you always got to consider it like you're 50-50. Even if you did a hundred good deeds, still you're just 50-50 because who knows what you did the last week. I didn't do last week. You understand? <laughs> so if you just do one good deed now, the very last thing that you've done and then all of a sudden the plane fall drops to the ground. <laughs> Whatever it is, think about tomorrow. You're learning up in the sky. That's what I do when I travel on the... I told you, I, yes. I, from the time the, the, the plane leaves the ground to the time I, it comes back, I'm learning all the time. <laughs> Those other poor souls, they go and buy insurance for money. Uh, money's not going to help me. I, I want life. <laughs> go I pay the premium to it. Whatever it is. So far, I survived. I, what? Yeah. You have to go to Washington? Uh -huh. I thought, well, so far, I managed. I, I, I'm going to, just before I go on to the plane. Oh. So, God forbid, it's never happened that a Jew should die. Then his time has come. Ashraf, happy is he. He has made the balance. So now he's basically righteous. More than 50% righteous. What if, God forbid, the last action he did was an improper one? Oh, that's not so good. <laughs> if you run out of time, you run out of time. It's all very nice if you had, you can figure out cheshbonos. The Rebbeinishim puts you down on writing a lease. All right, you're getting 120 years. All right, so he say, I can make my plans. Uh, my youth, I'll sow the wild oats. Uh, I'll make a few mistakes, because after all, I got plenty of them. And then, after, yeah. after, after a while, I'll start cleaning up the act. Yeah. Don't take me for a I'll work on it, but there's no use killing myself on it. You have to be a complete righteous type. Well, the answer is, Emma's, that you should be. But at any rate, some people will try to get away with a minimum effort. Of course, I've, I've told you this before. The Rebbeinish gives to a person exactly what they give to him. If they give a minimum effort to him, he gives a minimum effort back to them. Minimum schusi. So it doesn't really pay because you're just boxing yourself out of the whole situation. Like for instance, if a person just earns a general admission ticket to all of my boy, he doesn't get any choice box seats up there. Forget it. All right. What if Khalil over Avira Achas, he just did one sin. He succumbed to temptation. One sin that it's not like he's all his life done sin. Up to this bit happened. This is one last time he succumbed to temptation. Oilo, woe to him. He has outweighed himself and he's now on the demerit side. He's in the red. Shinemar, we have a passage in Kohelis, test. One sin, God forbid, can cause a lot of good to be lost, God forbid. But there's some kind of a rule here that the Gemara is going to... The rule that the Gemara is going to postulate is that we'll learn in a few lines from now is that God goes according to majority. The majority of whatever a person did. So the majority of his actions are meritorious. So he is basically righteous. And God will treat him that way. If the cause the majority of his actions is basically uh, improper type. You understand? So it's very careful. Now we're talking about just one action. There's no time to mess it up. So the best way in the world is that every single next action will be done properly. That way you got nothing to worry about. Because you're considering yourself 50%, and if it's now, the next action going to be a proper one. <coughs> you're still over 50%, if God forbid that's the end of your life. That way you're always on the safe ground. What if he knows he's dying? We all are dying. We're every day of our lives is one day closer to the day of our death. That's right. the right. Anyway, no, anyway, so is then he's supposed to consider himself a baby? Yes. No, when he's very much alive, you don't know when your time comes. Well, when he's, there can be a person that's so healthy, he can just and, and then the, the next se uh, uh, moment, God can cause him to have a heart uh, heart attack and just drop, right? Yes. The, the main thrust of what the Gemara is telling us, I think, is that a person should always consider himself 50 50 of enemy. And always, everything he does, you always have that one action in mind. So Just that one next action. No matter where you are. You well, that's that. Good, that way you don't that get confused. Thing. Some people say you have to be... No. The okay. very next thing that you have to do, that, that's very simple. Oh, it doesn't call, call tremendous thinking power to figure out just do the next, very next thing that you do. It's a very thing. It's a very good program because this way you don't get confused. You don't have to get confused. Look at uh, some of these people, they think that you wear an outfit 
uh, you know, you wear a certain kind of uniform, that makes you a, a religious Jew. And uh, so therefore, uh, anything else that they do or don't do, perhaps they measure up, perhaps they don't. And sometimes if they don't wear the proper outfit, they are very uh, critical of others that don't. They say, well, they can't be religious Jews because they're not wearing the proper outfit. Well, that's, that's an intolerance that's improper. It's not the way a Jew is supposed to look at things. A, a Jew must always consider that he is just <clears throat> on the borderline. So that every, not, every time, the very next action that he does is crucial. It's not only to what, up. not only to it in itself, but it can mess up everything he did in his whole life prior to this time. A tremendous he responsibility. Could also say to the well, that comes next. I'll balance himself in the in the in the scale to uh, to demerits. Lemar, I forbid, will cause a lot of good to be lost. Shechota that he sinned. Ovad we menu tovus harbe could lose. God forbid, much good. Shimon says, why is this so? The fish or all of because the world. Nidon Achar Robo is judged according to its majority, according by God. That's the general whole world is judged according to There is uh, half of the world is filled with rich Rishoim and half of the world is filled with Tzadikim that's Wait, in the middle. I don't know. Because maybe there's less people right. doing the middle. The Yachid and also an individual person, Nidon Achar Robo, is also judged according to the majority of their, whether it's meritorious or demerit. In such a circumstances, not only is this individual person affecting by his one next action, his own personal future, he is affecting the future of the entire world. That's a tremendous responsibility. It's one thing if a person is going to say, if I go and make a mistake, I'll pay for it. But if he's going to make a mistake, God forbid, the whole world could, God forbid, pay for it. Now that's a tremendous responsibility, yes? Only half of the world, or half of the, on the world scale, half is mitzvahs. Half is. And he does one mitzvah. Then he, the he manages to go and make the whole world basically righteous. What a wonderful <laughs> recompense. Wow. Counting the non-Jews? Everything, everybody. Oh. All mankind. But, but say so, if we go out and say we eat for are you saying that then that the rest of the world could be adversely yes. affected by the Now isn't that a tremendous yeah. responsibility? <laughs> That's a, it just, oh you're not kidding brother. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's the world on your shoulders, even though simplistically you're not any place else except by yourself. For yourself. The fact that all mankind is resting on your action. Who said this was? One what makes you think that yeah. you're responsible or not? You're talking about you're talking about following everything, right? No. Every choice is the next choice. Right. That's exactly right. Again, Hashem, you're getting the message. It's getting the God actually wants you to be a real He's good type, do an incredible job. Lo and behold, you... So what's so yeah, terrible about it? But look at all these people who aren't, and the whole world is all... we got to save them. we got to save them by our actions. Lots of we just have to renew our efforts. This is tremendous, uh, a tremendous opportunity. Like my younger brother, yeah, really? may You can save the whole world by... Absolutely. Just, yeah. One man did it. Avram, our forefather, by his individual actions, saved all mankind from destruction. One person... Destroy the world because of his he, he didn't. He didn't destroy the world because Avram was there. So... Abraham did as much good as all mankind could have done for ten generations of all mankind. <laughs> Can you have a concept of one human being doing... No, so, so when <laughs> just asking you to do every next action right, that's not asking too much. If Abraham can do enough to go and outbalance what all mankind should have done, and this is a tremendous concept. We, we, and we as... That's it's not on you. Not on me. What did you make think of me? Mikhail. Oh, besides learning Torah, I teach Torah every time somebody wants to learn with me. And I tell you, they want to learn with me a lot of times. Yeah, I learn every day. I learn the first day of... The second day of Rosh Hashanah, I learn twice. I taught twice on, on Shabbos Tshuva. And on, on Sunday, the next day I learned... To, uh, yesterday we learned, and today we're learning. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm doing my best. It might not be very much. And yeah, that's right. Sometimes I get exhausted, so I gotta go to sleep. But God does not just do you make a mistake. 
and that's it, kid. No, he's not like a fly. It gives you enough opportunity to realize you made a mistake. This, our attitude must be that it is crucial, that very next action is very crucial to not only to our own well-being, but... It will affect in the whole world. That's yeah. correct. I'm not saying it. I'm not making it up. It's right here in the Gomorrah. <laughs> very simple. Listen very carefully. Um, gives us an opportunity to do a proper thing. Yishalem is not without a uh, proper rewarding us in every area. He makes us a better person. He gives us uh, good things now. He gives us good things later. He protects us against our enemy. He both in this world and the world. Now I think it's well worthwhile to engage in this activity. You've got everything to win and of course you've got everything to lose. And it depends on how you react to it. I don't think that a person can live all his life without responsibility. responsibility. The true person, the person that is truly free, Ezel ben Chorin, who is a free person? That's a person that engages in Torah and mitzvahs. This is a free person. If a person does not engage in Torah and mitzvahs, he is a slave. He's a slave to his yetzer. He's a slave to his passion. He is being driven by forces beyond his control. But if he is truly a servant of God, in the proper sense, his life is a joy all through his entire life. Not only a joy to him, but to everybody he comes in contact with. And he said that he, he does a lot of mitzvah stuff. I don't know. Did you get a great communication from God? <laughs> a printout. Right now, your spiritual values, your, you can afford to spend a few of your spiritual values in other areas. Does he get a print out there? I don't have such uh, some, uh, direct uh, communication. Uh, all right, now, Michoel, do you understand? I know this is a little mind-boggling. Whatever you do in the future, whatever comes up. Uh, we're learning the Gemara, so you shouldn't think that Rabbi Freelander is trying to go and frighten you. I'm not frightening you. Here it is. Why am I frightening you? you come that God will help you if you want to do his work. He'll help you. I want to, Probably. and I try. Well, well, uh, welcome to the club. Yeah, what? Then, uh, the next action I take, then the whole world is affected. See? There is a story going around, it sticks its head in the ground. Since it can't see the enemy, so presumably the enemy can't see it. You can hide your facts, hide your uh, thing, but the Gomorrah says very specifically here, we're not talking about a guesswork. Gomorrah comes from the Rabbinisha. He's telling us the way he operates. And he's telling us ahead of time, so you don't have to go and be based on misinformation or misunderstanding of what's happening. It's, he plays it out very clearly. You want something, you want some, something, some things out of life. Don't you just don't want to live like an animal and die and, and be thrown away? Is that the way you want to live? Well, you want to have something more than that out of life, wouldn't you? Yes. Whatever you want that is meritorious, God will give you, provided you do what He wants you to do. Isn't that a proper... Uh, I mean, you want something. You want, so you want to have success. Success comes because God... I feel that God has given me more than I deserve. I don't deserve all the kindnesses He's given. I wanted a long time ago, and I mentioned this to my Father in Heaven, many years ago. I mentioned to my Father in Heaven, and I repeat it again. After you, when I was very zealous, tried to be as good a Jew as possible, and still I realized after a whole experience of living that I have from time to time made mis uh, mistakes in my capacity to analyze what is proper to do and what is improper. I realized that and it became more and more apparent to me in my life that I from time to time have made many grievous errors in my choices, realizing that I have, in fact, made many mistakes in the past, I have no reason to believe that I will be immune from making mistakes in the future. Based on my black track record, what I have seen, I, I surmise it will continue in that pattern. Perhaps some of the more grievous types but still insisting on having mistakes. Having, having understand that much understand, and striving still to try to become a good Jew, uh, many years ago, because uh, 35 years ago, before I even became a rabbi, I came to the understanding and I prayed, I prayed to God, please direct my ways. 
You should make the proper choices. Don't depend upon my capacity to understand what is the problem. You make it your decision. This is the way I should go. Even if I, in my understanding, realize that that is the way I should go. Please, take over and direct my path so that I do the thing that is proper in your eyes. And if, God forbid, I ever ask you in prayer, give me a different direction other than the one that you know is good for me. Have mercy upon me and do not listen to me. You lead me in the way that you want to. I, for my level best, to be a good... I'll try my level best to do your <coughs> commandments as best I know how. And as I become more knowledgeable, I'll try to uh, spread this knowledge among other Jews as best I know how. But ultimately, the bottom line is that you, God, you should, you should direct my ways so that I do it in the way that is proper in your eyes. You hear what I'm saying? And I say, even if, God forbid, in my wisdom, I acquire some more Torah knowledge, and I now think that I understand. If, God forbid, I ever ask you to do something that is contrary to my best interest, or to the interest of what you want, then please have mercy on me and do not listen to me. And do exactly what you want me to be. Now, is that a proper way of approaching service of God? I'm asking you a question. So this is the way I live. So I make uh, things like, for instance, uh, I've told you this many times. I, uh, I don't know about other Jews. Eerie feeling inside of me. If I see any Jew that's not learning Torah, cannot learn Torah, I am beside myself. I cannot rest. I have no, no, no rest. I cannot rest because I feel that there's something lacking in the service of God. Somebody is not serving God because never, they don't know better. And I have to go and tilt them, and I have to do my best to try to. So it's sometimes a very lonely passage. Sometimes you get rebuffed and misunderstood, but whatever it is, it only. And I've always felt that, thanks God has been very kind to me. He has allowed me to learn his Torah to the extent that uh, I am teaching others his Torah. A person wants to reach as many people as possible. I would like to reach, you understand? Uh, I see from um, the track record up to now, for some reason, God has directed it not to be that way. That he knows best. And the same way, everything that I may plan, if God and his uh, wisdom, and certainly superior wisdom to mine, feels that uh, it's something that uh, is not what I should have, then I ask him, oh, please continue. Don't give me what I shouldn't have. That way, I don't get all those uh, frustrations. Why am I to be frustrated if that I have the greatest sin? And if it's God's will that I should learn Torah, continue as long as I can to do these activities. And my limited understanding of God's will, oh, and how I should do it, then I leave to my Father in heaven. You want to teach? It's right. inside of me. I, I feel ill at ease. Be a...